So the next uh, speaker is Perry Lutz. Perry is Senior Applications Engineer for Process Automation with uh, Suncor Energy. Please uh, join me in welcoming uh, Perry. Thanks, Peter, and uh, welcome, everyone. Um, just a little bit about myself. I'm, uh, there's been a lot of talk here. There's process automation people, IT people. Well, I am kind of from the process automation side. I started my career in process control, moved to real-time optimization, and uh, did a lot of projects there, but then took a different direction, moved up more to the business side, did production business planning, uh, moved to st uh, refinery development, some strategic work, but then now I've come back to uh, process control and real-time optimization. So the presentation that I have today, uh, bringing financial clarity to operational decision-making is kind of right down my alley and kind of uh, pulls on all the different skills that I've learned and done throughout my career. So what, what I want to do is uh, I want to tell you about what this financial clarity is and I want to look at how, it's, uh, uh, how we see it and how we can fix it. So just a little... A little preamble. Uh, at Suncor, we've uh, analyzed cases varying, uh, verifying our RPM, which is uh, short f uh, for profit meter application, and it can generate nearly 50 cents a barrel of crude by helping close a gap uh, between plan and actual in near real time. Uh, it's a visualization tool uh, that supports a business process, uh, monetizing the gap and assisting the refinery team uh, to act on a daily or more frequent basis to, uh, to close that gap. Uh, and it involves no additional headcount and virtually no maintenance. Uh, it runs once an hour, uh, generates and manipulates data, which is already out there, uh, illustrating there in, in real time uh, your operation and how you compare to the, the target uh, production numbers that you're looking for. So, a little bit about our Suncor. Uh, where I work, the Sarnia Refinery, uh, 85,000 barrel a day uh, refinery. We have uh, two crude units, uh, one vacuum distillation unit, a uh, Hoodry Cat Cracker, a two stage hydro cracker, reformer, distillate hydro treater, and a BTX, which is a, a chemicals and solvents producing unit. Uh, we have uh, multi variable control on all the units and uh, real-time optimization on a few of the units. Uh, planning and scheduling models that we use, the vectors are built from rigorous models and are updated by uh, regression of uh, actual plant data. Uh, we worked in partners with, uh, with Manufacturing Technology Network, uh, a company formed to integrate uh, planning and scheduling with operations and control. Uh, their founders uh, were technology and business leaders and uh, develop multivariable constraint control, real-time optimization software, and applications for the uh, oil and refining industry. And uh, together, the partners of the company have an extensive uh, number of years of experience in the industry. So, first in automation, let's look back. 1959, the first refinery computer control Texas Port Arthur Refinery. 1991, first equation-oriented RTO, real-time optimizer at, Sun at Sunoco, Sarnia, Hydrocracker. And now, 2013, uh, we've embarked on the first refinery-wide optimization at Suncor, Sarnia, and uh, are in the meantime have staged uh, the refinery-wide optimization in deployment of the profit meter. So business problem, closing the gap. What is closing the gap? So most refiners have a gap in their monthly plan versus actual of one to three dollars a barrel of crude feedstock. This is even after uh, discounting for unplanned uh, disruptions. Uh, this re remaining gap is mainly due to a number of reasons. One, misalignment between planning, scheduling, and control, objectives, constraints, and targets. 
Two, the manu manual passing of coordinated information between the different teams. Three, reconciliation processes that look back too late to allow prompt correction of that gap. That's, oh, there we go, thank you. And four, modeling and accuracy in both planning and scheduling models. So what RPM does, it helps close the gap by addressing all of these above. So, first steps in closing the gap. Gap can mean many things to different people. Some people don't see a gap, some people see a big gap. But, one thing's for sure, you can't control what you don't measure. So what we have to do is find a measurement to illustrate what this gap is. So let's expose what the gap is. In our business, uh, we run a monthly plan. That plan is based on crude purchases, product demands, and process constraints. So the monthly plan is an optimization. It runs across for us and for other uh, businesses. It could be varying uh, number of, uh, of per the period could be different lengths, but for us, it's one month. This gets passed down to the weekly schedule. So the weekly schedule, uh, which I, let me just back up a little bit. So the monthly plan, the weekly schedule, the daily orders, all different teams, all teams working and kind of we heard that word silo, so independently. So this is kind of what I had uh, first said about information being passed down and not, uh, not, not being seen the same by the different groups. So the, the weekly schedule then on a weekly basis uh, passes down orders. The orders on a daily basis get passed down to the process control and real-time optimization which implement them to the plant. So there is a gap that can exist between each one of these. So each one of these uh, is, can be summed to the 50 cents a barrel that we've seen originally. So here's a gap that we're addressing that we want to see that this money is left on the table. Let's see if we can get some of it. So awareness of the gap is a result of advances in planning, scheduling, and automation technology, and a push to better integrate flows between the teams. Some refiners address the gap by collecting and displaying most of the necessary information on their real-time historian or their business systems. Others use a frequent top-down incentives update approach. These approaches address symptoms rather than the cause of the gap because of a lack of team collaboration enablement. So there is typically no single refinery view that shows the current gap in a way that satisfies the needs of all the members of the combined refinery leadership team. So let's, let's illustrate this. Opportunity cost visualization today. We see the planner's monthly average, which is done offline. So it looks at uh, the dollars, the volumes. It's always one month behind. So it generates for the upcoming month. Typical gap, about a dollar a barrel. We see the scheduler's uh, daily and weekly average. It's a weekly back reconciliation, it's one week behind usually. It's trying to uh, average, it's trying to meet the monthly average. So it's on a weekly basis trying to make, trying to steward to that monthly plan. Then you have the operator, real time, and the advanced process control and uh, real time optimization, which is looking at the numbers for today, but there's no dollars associated with it. That's currently how the, the refinery runs. Now let's look at this in another, in another way. We have the monthly plan. We can see where it's come, where it's going in the near, and where it's going in the future. We layer on top the schedule. So now also we see where the schedules come from. 
We see where it is today and where it's going in the future. So relative to the plan, we, could, we have this visualization together. Then we have the actual layered on top of that too. So now we see the actual in the past, the actual in, in the present, and we see where we can go with it in the future. And we put the dollars associated with that. So now we see, are we making money? Are we where the plan wants us to be? Or are we below where the plan wants us to be? This is all on hourly performance. It compares uh, actual to plan in the case, in the sense of dollars, volume, and quality. Quality being of the products. So RPM is not planning, scheduling, or control software, nor is it a smart dashboard, but it's an integration of planning and scheduling output with plant control. It adds a business process to the work of the leadership group at the daily operating meetings of a refinery to help them operate closer to the optimum as determined by the planning, planner and scheduler. It calculates the opportunity cost of not meeting currently scheduled targets. That's the actionable plan. So that's the difference between where you, your schedule wants you to be, your scheduled plan, and where you actually are today in real time. And the sources of the gap can be prioritized so they can be analyzed and corrected in terms of dollars. So you know which ones uh, are valued more. Those are the ones you want to go after. It enables collaboration of planner, scheduler, operator, advanced process control person, engineer, to correct the gap as it happens. So what it does is it gives you uh, a collaboration between all the groups to work together for the, same, for the same cause. So source of benefits. Increased yield of higher value products captures these benefits by allowing closer adherence to daily operating schedule. People now paying more attention. It's uh, driving closer adherence to planning goals, streamlining and integration of work processes between planning, scheduling, operations, and process automation groups. It's sustainable by refinery personnel, supports operational excellence programs, and performance history can be used to justify expenditures on equipment, maintenance, and profit-enhancing projects. So let's have a look And how do we define profit. So profit is defined as the sum measure profit of the flows in the plant, qualities of the plant, and the dollars. And those dollars are from our planning tool. That's subtracted from the scheduled profit, which are the flows from the schedule, the qualities from the schedule, and again, the dollars from the planning uh, program. So basically, we're comparing process performance against schedule's target, scheduler's target on an hourly basis. The flows, qualities, and dollars are all user configurable. So what we're looking at basically is a delta. So, the daily profit engineer monitors the difference between goals, actuals, and works with planning and scheduling, operations control to try to close this gap. Here's some examples. Overall, we have a, a total profit, uh, profitability for the day, and again, this is a delta. So this is uh, uh, viewable by all the different teams, uh, the delta, zero, if you're operating along the zero delta, you're basically operating to target. So you're right on target. If you're above that, you're operating above target. So you're doing better than the scheduled plan. And if you're below that, then you, there's a gap, a gap that you're going to try to fix. Now, if you see a gap, you have to be able to drill down to find out where that gap is. So we can break out the total profit into the uh, product pool profits. For example, here we have the gasoline pool. So it follows somewhat the profit, uh, but where it goes negative, 
you can see that you have to drill down further in that gasoline uh, pool or the jet for another example or the ultra low sulfur diesel for another example. Now, once, once you determine uh, what pool the, the problem exists in, you have to be able to drill down even further. So now what we do is we look at a comparison of the different flows. So for example, gasoline pool total flow, we look at the actual compared to plan, compared to the production plan, compared to the schedule. You can see the past, the future. On this one, you can see that there's been a drop, so you've dropped from where your schedule plan is. You see where you want to go, what it's going to take to get back there. Your gasoline pool, then, you can break down again into further components to drill down even further. Uh, Reformate flow, alkylate flow, light straight run. Drill down to see where the problems lie there. Why are you not running to plan? And then it's a matter of chasing to operations, chasing to the control. Where, do the problem, where does the problem really exist? So, summary of the benefits identified. Open loop optimization, we claim 70 cents a barrel. Work process automation, 10 cents a barrel. Operational excellence, 10 cents a barrel. Operational opportunity, 10 cents a barrel. So in total, we have a dollar a barrel of an opportunity cost in closing this gap. Now this gap, uh, just gonna step back for a sec, the uh, production planner at the end of the month uh, in his, uh, one of the things that he has to do is he looks back at all the events that happened during the month and he reruns his production plan with all the events that happened and compares that to where the plan actually went. Uh, somewhat similar to this. And he can never achieve the same, there's always a delta in his dollars. So there's, that means that there's always money left on the table because of the way, either the way the information is pushed or the way the modeling is done in the different areas. So limitations of the, uh, of the profit meter. So due to the open loop nature, which is the way we're operating right now, uh, the application claims about one half of what the total benefits are. All benefits arise from yield improvements, and capturing the rest and more requires, requires a refinery multi-unit optimizer, uh, which employs a simple engineering model that optimizes the scheduler's solution. Uh, and this, op this refinery model is based on a full refinery. Oh, thank you.